Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our YouTube channel of Elite Expertise. So Elite Expertise is a platform that helps all the overseas pharmacists to clear their licensing examination. If you are planning to migrate to Australia, US, UK, Canada, Ireland, so we help you guys in clearing your uh, licensing examination and help you to become a pharmacist of over in those countries. I'm excited to announce that today is our orientation session for our November batch CAPS examination students. So first of all, I would like to welcome all our November batch students to Elite Expertise. And with your tremendous hard work and our support, we'll make sure that you guys clear your CAPS examination in your first attempt. And in today's session, I would like to present a few things. So first of all, I would like to go through the CAPS examination syllabus and then the CAPS examination pattern. And regarding the CAPS examination passing score, that how much percent that you guys need to uh, score in order to clear both the paper one and paper two and what strategies that you need to follow in order to prepare for your CAPS examination. And apart from those, I'll also go through how our mocks are designed and how our handouts will be, and what are the different types of the assignments that we guys will provide to you. And at the end, I will also discuss about a new activity that we have implemented is the team push activities. So where each student will be pushed by their team members in order to complete their task on time, like to finish their assignments as well as the mocks and grant test. So all the other team members will push the uh, candidates to finish all the tasks on time. Okay. So these are the few things that we are going to discuss in today's presentation, guys. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Hi, sir. Good evening. How are you, sir? Yeah, good evening, sir. Hi, sir. Good evening, sir. Hi, Madhuri. Hi, Trupti. Uh, sir, how's going? Yeah, hi, Imran. How good are you? Evening, sir. Yeah, hi, Bharat. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Hi, Sushma. Hi, Subhash. Hello, sir. Good evening. Hi, Charanji. Hello, sir. Good evening. Hello, sir. Yeah, good hi, Saura. So, good evening for everyone. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. Sorry, I can't see the names. So just a moment. Mm -hmm. OK, guys. So first of all, I would like to welcome everyone to Elite Expertise. So yeah. I'd like to thank you guys for uh, choosing Elite Expertise as your platform for clearing the CAPS examination. And uh, welcome to Elite Expertise. So guys, like uh, in today's orientation session, I'm going to discuss a few things with you regarding the CAPS exam pattern and also how the examination uh, scoring is done and also what are the plans that we are going to uh, do for the November batch. Like uh, there are some changes that we are uh, going to implement, uh, especially for your November batch. Okay, So those things, all the changes that I will uh, discuss with you. Okay, so before going to in detail about all those things, so let's. Uh, sorry, can you can you guys make sure? Yeah, turn off your microphones. So first of all, uh, I will start myself. My name is Arif Mohammed, uh, and I am a, a clinical pharmacist here in Australia. So I am working as a pharmacist in Northern Health Hospital in Melbourne. So I moved to Australia in 2017. In 2017, I cleared my CAPS examination. And after that, uh, I did my internship in community pharmacies. And after doing my internship, uh, I moved to the hospital and started practicing as a clinical pharmacist in Australian hospitals. So, and for the last four years, I have been helping the students in clearing their CAPS examination. So not only in the CAPS, but also I'm helping the students in clearing their uh, intern return as well as the oral examination. And for the CAPS examination, like almost like there have been like 300 plus students uh, who have uh, got the training from my side and uh, all like around 90 percent of them, they have cleared uh, the CAPS examination. So, well, guys, like after moving here to the Australia, like uh, I did my internship uh, in community, as I uh, told you, and then after doing uh, internship in community pharmacy, like it was a bit challenging for me to find a hospital, uh, sorry, to find a job in the hospital as a clinical pharmacist, because in Australia, uh, the clinical pharmacist roles are very less. So I also did my um, 
another specialization which is known as a consultant pharmacy so i did the consultation specialization and i became a consultant pharmacist as well and then uh, finally i got uh, settled as a clinical pharmacist in uh, australia in australian hospitals so this is about my journey so now so i'll give my presentation now so i hope everyone can see this slide guys yes sir okay thank you thank you okay first of all uh, welcome to elite expertise so elite expertise is a platform that helps uh, everyone to clear their licensing examination especially now uh, we are helping uh, all the overseas candidates to clear their caps examination and um, please welcome to the orientation of november batch okay so myself arif mohammad and uh, i am one of the uh, directors and i am one of the lecturers at the elite expertise and uh, harika madam she's also one of the directors and one of the lecturers at elite expertise so we both are working as a clinical pharmacist here in australia so i am working in northern health in melbourne and uh, she's working in monash uh, hospital which is also in melbourne okay so that's about our brief introduction and in today's uh, presentation i would like to discuss a few things related to the caps examination so the first thing is i will quickly go through the caps exam syllabus how the syllabus it will be and all the syllabus is nothing but it is everything is from the official website of the apc okay? and the caps exam pattern how the pattern will be and what is the passing score how much percentage that you need to score in each paper to clear your caps examination okay? and what are the strategies for the preparation that what uh, strategies that you need to implement for preparation and what are the things that we help you in clearing the caps examination okay like um, we got the mocks we got handouts we have also designed few new assignments for you guys to get familiarized with each topic and at the end like uh, i will also would like to discuss a new activity that i am going to implement from this uh, batch okay from the november batch that is nothing but a team push activity so i will discuss in detail about uh, all these things in the next upcoming slides okay so guys let's have a look through the caps exam syllabus first so this caps examination like most of you might have know already the pattern of the exam, but those who are completely new, so for them, uh, I'm just quickly explaining how the pattern it will be. So the CAPS exam, it consists of two papers, that is paper one and paper two. So in paper one, you will be having chemistry part and physiology, pharmacology part. Okay. So chemistry component and physiology and pharmacology component. So chemistry component, it carries up to 30% weightage, whereas the physiology and pharmacology part carries around 70% of weightage. It means that in paper one, there will be 100 MCQs. So out of 100 MCQs, approximately, like roughly around 30 MCQs will be from chemistry component. And the remaining 70 MCQs, it will be from physiology and pharmacology part, pharm pharmacology component. Okay. And now let's have a look through in detail about uh, each component. The first one is the chemistry part. So in chemistry, you will be having the organic chemistry. So you need to study the medicinal chemistry, the drug metabolism, that is the phase one, phase two uh, drug reactions, then the stereochemistry. So stereochemistry plays a major role, like definitely you can expect at least one or two questions from the stereochemistry part. Okay. And the other uh, question that mostly you can expect is from the medicinal chemistry, especially related to the structure activity relationships and they will give you the structures and they will ask you to identify what compound it is. Okay. So those things, it will be covered in the organic chemistry, the basic uh, chemistry structures, as well as in SAR part, that is the medicinal chemistry component. Okay. And as I told you, the stereochemistry, definite question, you can expect one or two questions from stereochemistry. And apart from uh, the four major part, four major uh, things in chemistry. So there are a few other things like physical chemistry, like you need to uh, cover the kinetics, acid base equilibrium and phase equilibrium uh, components, and then the analytical chemistry, biochemistry, and other some minor topics like saponification, esterification, polymerization. So all these things, they come under chemistry component. Okay. So 
everything here which is displayed in this slide okay it is the component of chemistry and it carries a weightage of 30 percentage in your final examination and chemistry will you you will get the questions related to chemistry only in paper one so paper one the chemistry questions you can see only in paper one not in paper two okay. then apart from chemistry the other components in paper one are physiology and pharmacology component okay. so physiology component it carries a less weightage when compared to pharmacology so roughly i can say that around uh, 20 questions you can get uh, in physiology part okay. and out of these 20 questions like there will be some simple minor defi definitions like they may ask you that what is dyspnea okay so dyspnea means difficulty in breathing and sometimes they may ask you a little bit of complicated or the application type of the questions like what happens in case of left side heart failure okay and what happens in case of right side heart failure okay and which valves should get closed during left ventricular systole and which valves should get closed during right ventricular systole or uh, right ventricular diastole such a type of application type or the concept based questions will also be asked in physiology so in physiology overall there will be a general physiology okay, where uh, they may ask you a simple definitions okay, or most of the times you will get the questions from the pathophysiology component okay so overall physiology will plays uh, a minor role Okay. So it means that only 20 questions you can expect from physiology component. And the major component in paper one is the pharmacology part. Okay. It is the core component uh, and roughly you can expect around 40 or sometimes up to 50 questions from pharmacology component. Okay. And in pharmacology, so there are different uh, parts or uh, it is subdivided into biochemical pharmacology where you will study about the receptor uh, theories and all the other uh, major uh, systems like the drug classifications as well as their mechanism of actions of all the uh, like all the systems like endocrine system cardiovascular respiratory uh, diuretics analgesics and so on and also the next one is the system systemic pharmacology that is nothing but the mechanism of action of all the drugs then chemotherapy which plays a major role where you will be studying about the antibacterials antivirals antifungals antiprotozoals and anti-cancer agents as well and toxicology so all this part this component it will be covered under pharmacology uh, domain or in pharmacology component okay and this pharmacology it is also a part of paper one and like when we look at the uh, paper one, there will be 100 MCQs in paper one. The same goes with paper two as well. There will be 100 MCQs. And you will be given like two hours time to, cl to clear each paper. Okay? In order to uh, answer all the 100 MCQs, you will be given two hours. That is 120 minutes. Okay? And at the end of each paper, you may get a case study. Okay? So there will be a uh, small case study and there will be five questions sometimes there will be only four questions related to that case and at first you need to uh, go through the case and you need to answer the questions which are related to the case okay. so in paper one and in paper two in both the papers there will be at least one case study at the end okay. so these are the uh, components like in paper one it carries a chemistry which which is uh, approximately around 30 percentage of weightage and it also has got the physiology pharmacology component which is around 70 percentage of weightage okay then now moving to the paper two so in paper two you'll be having pharmaceutics which carries 30 percent weightage okay, and therapeutics which carries 70 percentage of weightage okay so again here we can roughly split like out of 100 mcqs there will be roughly around 30 MCQs which are related to pharmaceutics and around 70 MCQs which are related to therapeutics component. Okay. So now let's have a look through in detail like how the pharmaceutics and therapeutics components are uh, subdivided. So in pharmaceutics, you will be having pharmaceutical technology. Okay. So where you need to study mainly about the physical pharmacy like emulsions, suspensions, uh, syrups, okay. um, as well as uh, capsules, tablets, suppositories so everything that you need to study under the physical pharmacy 
or it we can also um, just tell it as the pharmaceutical technology and then the next um, sub component in pharmaceutics is the pharmaceutical calculations so calculations it plays a major role here so you can expect up to uh, sometimes around 10 calculations from pharmaceutics okay because the other calculations they will be included under therapeutics as well okay so the calculations part it will be divided into two parts one is the pharmaceutical calculations and the other one is the calculations which comes under the therapeutics mainly the dose related calculations and all those things they come under therapeutics okay so those things that we'll see in the next upcoming slide and in pharmaceutics you will also be having the biopharmaceutics okay it also plays a major role so you can uh, expect maximum questions from biopharmaceutics. And also the other parts in pharmaceutics are the microbiology and immunology. So at least one or two questions you can expect from microbiology and immunology from pharmaceutics. So overall from pharmaceutics, okay, so you will get around 30 MCQs. And the rest of the MCQs, that is the 70 MCQs in paper two will be from therapeutics. So the therapeutics part of paper two, it plays a major role in paper two. Like, as I said, that around 70 MCQs, okay, 60 to 70 questions will be from therapeutics. Okay. So again, the therapeutics has got uh, sub components, like it has got the calculations part. Okay. So here in therapeutics calculations, mainly they will ask you about the dose uh, calculations. Okay. And in therapeutics, they will uh, ask you about the drug doses, the posology. Okay. So you need to get familiarized with each uh, drug doses and the drug of choice, selection of uh, the appropriate drug. Okay. So if there is a condition, if there is a medical condition, then which drug is the best uh, choice? Like what they do is they will give you a short case scenario. Okay. So in that case scenario, they will mention like the patient has uh, so and so conditions and the patient also has the bilateral renal artery stenosis condition. And the patient has the hypertension. Now we need to select an appropriate medication for this patient for managing the hypertension. Okay. So here, in, in such a type of the case, you need to first you need to read the case. Okay. And you need to know that what are the conditions or what are the main contraindications for that particular patient. Okay. And you need to analyze the four options from the given four options. Okay, the patient has the bilateral renal artery stenosis problem it means that we can't go with either ace inhibitors or arps okay so from there you need to eliminate that option okay? and then you need to have a look if the patient has got any other comorbid conditions so in this way you need to uh, identify which medication would be the best suitable for that patient okay so that's nothing but the applied therapeutics okay? and the other subcomponent is about the adrs so you'll be uh, asked about what are the main uh, adverse drug reactions of the drug and the drug interactions. It also plays a major role in paper two. So at least you can expect four or five questions from drug interaction component. Okay? And apart from that patient counseling and uh, providing the drug information, which is nothing but the patient counseling part. And there are some other minor things like some herbal uh, products. You need to know about the herbal components and all the over the counter components. So these are the things that uh, are included under therapeutics part. Okay. So this is an overview of both the paper one and paper two. So paper one mainly carries chemistry, physiology and pharmacology. And in paper two, pharmaceutics and therapeutics. Okay. So now let's have a look how the passing score or how um, the grading will be done in CAPS examination. Okay. So in CAPS examination, the passing, there, there is no any uh, score which would be given. Okay, So the only thing that they will uh, give at the final result is either you are successful or unsuccessful. Okay, So if you are successful, then they will give you the result as the successful. If you are unsuccessful, then you will get the result as unsuccessful. Okay, But anyhow, I will briefly I will explain you how the how they split. Uh, like as we have already seen that in the previous slide, we have seen that in paper one, Chemistry carries 30 percent weightage, and the other components will carry 70 percent. Okay, so now let's have a look how the passing uh, percentage it gets distributed. Okay, so in paper one, as already we have seen that pharmaceutical chemistry has got 30 percent weightage. 
and physiology and pharmacology part has got 70 percentage of weightage okay so when when it comes to um, passing score in paper one so out of 30 percent so here let's assume that you have got 30 mcqs related to chemistry so out of 30 mcqs you must score 50 mcqs out of it okay so 50 percent 50 percent in the sense 15 mcqs should be correct okay so you must uh, get uh, the correct score of 15 mcqs out of 30. Okay. the same goes with uh, physiology and pharmacology component so in physiology and pharmacology there will be around 70 mcqs both combined together so out of 70 you need to score 50 percent that is 35. okay so 35 plus 15 35 from physiology and pharmacology and 15 from chemistry so all together will make 50 percent okay so if you score 50 percent in paper one then you are considered as successful in paper one okay but again the challenge here is you must score 50 percent in each component okay that is 50 percent in chemistry component and 50 percent in physiology and pharmacology component Okay, so now what happens here is like instead of getting 50% in chemistry, okay, if you have scored only 48% in chemistry, okay, like let's say for, a, for instance, if there are 30 MCQs from chemistry, out of 30, if it is 50%, it means that you need to score 15 out of 30, but you have done only 14. So you have scored only 14 out of 30. It means that you are you you haven't reached the 50 percent mark. Okay. Then you will be considered as unsuccessful in paper one. Okay. So the whole paper, like even if you lose in one component, okay, then you need to. It is considered that you will you have lost the whole paper, and you need to repeat the complete paper again. Okay. That is the paper one once again. Okay. So either if you lose in the chemistry component or if you lose in the physiology and pharmacology component. Okay. So in either, if you lose, then you need to repeat the whole paper again. Okay. Then the same goes with the paper two. So in paper two, as already we have seen that Sutix carries around 30% weightage and therapeutics carries around 70% weightage. So once again, in order to pass paper two, you need to score 50% in Sutix. That is, if there are 30 MCQs in Sutix, then you need to score 15 out of 30. The same goes with therapeutics. If there are 70 MCQs in therapeutics, then you need to score 35 out of 70 in therapeutics. So if you score both like 15 MCQs in Sutix and 35 in therapeutics, both together, it makes up to 50%. So in CAPS examination, like they need overall 50% in each paper and at the same time 50 percent in each component okay 50 percent in sutics and 50 percent in therapeutics okay the same goes with the paper one that i have explained just now okay so again here the same rule is applicable like instead of 35 if you score only 34 in therapeutics it means that you are unsuccessful in paper two even though you have scored like uh, in sutics out of 50, you have scored up to 90% in sutics, but in therapeutics, you have scored only 48% in therapeutics. Okay. So it means that you are unsuccessful in therapeutic component of paper two. So which means that you need to repeat the whole paper two once again. Okay. So overall, finally, guys, like in case if you are, uh, if you want to be successful in paper one and paper two, it means that you need to score 50 percent in each paper okay? and at the same time you need to score 50 percent in each component as well okay so 50 percent in each component and 50 percent in each paper then you will be considered as successful in both the papers paper one and paper two so if you are successful in both the papers then you will get the final result as pass okay so this is about uh, how the exam pattern it will be and uh, how much percentage that you need to score in each paper in order to clear your caps exam okay and here the other things is other thing is like 
for the CAPS examination, right now the fee is around 2,300 Australian dollars. And if you are unsuccessful just in one paper, okay, like let's say for instance, if you have cleared your paper one okay, in your November attempt, okay, and you have you are unsuccessful in paper two, it means that you need to repeat only paper two, not the paper one. Okay, so when once you are unsuccessful only in paper two, it means that you need to repeat only paper two, not the paper one again. Okay, but the condition here is you need to pay the full fees. Okay, APC it takes it collects the full fees from you guys. Okay, so again you need to pay the same two thousand three hundred dollars even if you are taking a single paper. Okay, so it means that you are you are supposed to pay the full fees. Okay, so you need to keep it in consideration about uh, the fee issue as well. So that's why I always recommend you guys when you are preparing, always you need to make sure that you need to focus on each component. Okay. So let's say, for example, some of you might be much uh, strong or much thorough or much interested in pharmacology. And what they do is they just keep on studying more in pharmacology. Okay. And they will ignore the chemistry component. So if they do such thing, like it means that they will lose the chemistry component. Okay, if they lose the chemistry component, it means that they are unsuccessful in paper one. If they are unsuccessful in paper one, it means that they need to repeat the test again by paying the full fees. Okay, so the same goes with paper two as well. If you are interested in therapeutics and if you study only therapeutics and if you ignore the pharmaceutics part, then you will lose the pharmaceutics. It means that, again, you will be unsuccessful in paper two. You need to repeat the paper two by paying the full fees to APC. Okay, So these are the few things that uh, I would like to share with you guys. And um, at Elite Expertise, so while preparing all the our uh, material, okay, so our lecture notes, as well as uh, our presentation slides, our handouts, our assignment topics, so everything that we prepare by referring the standard guidelines okay so we refer the standard books okay? like uh, goodman gilman rangendale cora campbell okay um, uh, that is the shard gel comprehensive pharmacy review shard gel okay? and the most important one for preparing for the caps examination is the amh australian medicines handbook so most of the questions that they prepare in the examination they mainly they prepare from the amh okay because in australia in order to practice as a pharmacist, okay, so AMH is the main book that every practicing pharmacist uh, they follow here. So pharmacists, doctors, so everyone, so they open AMH, AM, they refer the AMH to check the doses and to um, check the indication of the medications. So AMH is the most important one, and we prepared our content mainly from the AMH by referring all these standard books, AMH, and therapeutic guidelines. So in Australia, so especially in the hospital practice, so we mainly follow the therapeutic guidelines okay, in order to um, take any decision related to the patient medical condition. Okay. And therapeutic guidelines is also one of the most important one. Like most of the times in CAPS examination, they are asking the questions from therapeutic guidelines. So we also refer the therapeutic guidelines okay, while preparing our lecture content okay. and up to date up to date is also one of the latest uh, one like from where we get the latest information uh, and we prepare all our content from referring the up to date as well so here one assurance that i can uh, give it to you guys is so all the content all the lecture slides all the notes all the handouts assignments mocks that we prepare is by referring all the standard books and all the standard guidelines. So it means that you guys need not to worry much about referring any other textbooks or any other guidelines. Okay. So I always recommend that if you follow whatever be the lecture notes that we are providing to you, whatever be the uh, lecture content that we are giving to you, Okay. So our lecture videos, our uh, handouts, and all the assignments and the mocks. So if you follow those things, then that's enough for you to clear the CAPS examination. Okay. So you need not to go beyond that to study any other uh, guidelines or any other uh, standard textbooks. Okay. And then the other things are the strategies for preparation. 
Okay, so for November batch, I'm going to change few strategies for your uh, exam preparation. This is because main thing in July examination, everyone has got, uh, I can say that they, they got a little bit of uh, surprise or the shock when they saw their questions in the July uh, examination. It happened for everyone throughout the world, okay, those who gave the CAPS examination. Okay. So like in APC, what happens is usually they every time in each uh, in uh, each exam, like for the last uh, four or year, four four to five years, in each exam there will be some new questions that they frame up. So every time they will come up with some new questions, okay. and this is quite common. It happens every time. Okay. So they will frame up some new questions from the new contents, okay. and the percentage that they frame is around uh, 10 to 20 percent like 10 to 20 percent will be the new topics that the candidates might not have uh, studied or might not have um, gone through them before okay so it means that 10 to 20 percent of the questions will be some new questions that they see on the screen but unfortunately in july what happened was this percentage they have increased so this percentage it went up to 30 percent okay so it means that there are 30 percent of new questions that the candidate they have uh, faced on the screen okay. so you, however like for all the batches not only for the july batch even uh, for the last four years every time that i uh, recommend all the candidate those who are preparing for the caps examination i always recommend them to put their uh, preparation so strong okay. so if, in case if the preparation is so strong then at least if there is something new uh, questions that they come on the screen okay so still they can uh, easily answer the questions so always i recommend every batch in each batch okay, to put their preparation strong so what happened was like in the last uh, two batches everyone they were relying only on uh, doing the mocks and they thought that by doing the mocks they can easily clear the caps exam okay. but even from the beginning even for the july batch i uh, clearly i instructed that so by doing the mocks you can attempt uh, the exam but you can answer only 30 percent of the questions by doing only the mocks okay so in order for you to answer up to 70 or 80 percent of the questions the only strategy is you need to learn the concept. So if you learn the concept, what will be the way the examiner they try to twist? Then you can easily answer the questions. Okay. So this is what that in each batch I uh, always suggest for everyone. So to learn the concepts well. So if you learn the concepts well, then it doesn't matter. However, the examiners they try to twist, you guys can easily answer the questions in the paper okay so learning the concepts that's the most important one and once again what happens here is that when most of the students they think that okay they have watched uh the recording videos okay? like sometimes they because because they are working full time they may not have time to interact they may not have time to attend the live lectures and uh, interact directly with me or with ma'am so some of the candidates they have re relied only on uh, watching the recorded videos okay so that's fine it doesn't matter if you don't have the time then you can later on you can watch the recorded videos and you can learn from uh, the recorded videos as well but always i recommend for all the candidates at least weekly ones if you attend the live lectures then you can interact with the lecturers Okay. And you can ask in case if you have any questions, then without any hesitation, you can uh, ask to us. Okay. So, so that we can work together. Okay. So we can work together and we can, uh, I, I will give some uh, tips in case if you, depending on your weakness, if you are weak in chemistry component or if you are weak in statistics component or if you are weak in calculations part, okay then we will give some uh, tips that how you can improve in that component. So always I recommend all the students to try to attend the live lectures. And it, it, if you can't attend the live lectures every day, at least once a week, 
try to attend the live lectures and try to interact with the lecturers. Okay. And the new strategies that I'm going to implement is, so this strategies is the main thing is like, even for the last batch, for the July batch, we have spent around uh, 300 plus hours to uh, teach them. Okay, So around more than 300 plus hours of the recorded videos are available for the July batch. But the problem is, for the July batch, what happened was there were some uh, thing like we have to teach even the basic concepts as well okay, during the lecture hours. So we have taught everything like uh, the basic concepts. Okay, So it has took a long time um, for them to learn the concepts as well as then the advanced uh, MCQs, which are related to the all they have learned through the concepts. So from this batch, what I'm going to do is, so I, I'm going to implement a new uh, method, which is known as the pre-learning modules. Okay. So in the pre-learning modules, you guys need to learn something like there will be a recorded video will be available. At first, you need to watch that recorded video. Okay. And you need to get familiarized about that topic. Okay. Let's say, for example, if the topic is heart failure. Okay. So I will give you a uh, one hour recorded video on heart failure. Okay. So you guys need to watch that recorded video. Okay. So before you attend the lecture. So what happens here is when you guys come to the lecture by already watching the recorded videos, it means that you guys have brushed up your knowledge regarding the heart failure topic. And from now, what we'll do is during the live lecture, so we will focus mainly on solving the MCQs. So we will focus mainly on uh, answering your queries, answering your questions related to that topic. Okay. So with that, we will have much time to spend okay, and much time to interact. Okay. And uh, with that, you guys can clarify your doubts. Okay. So here, the strategies are, at first, I always recommend you guys to try to attend the live lectures. As much as possible, try to be in the live lecture. If not, then you can watch the recorded, but at least weekly once you need to be in touch with us. Okay. So if you are in touch with us, then we can come to know about your progress, how your preparation is going on, how much score that you are getting in the mocks and the assignments and so on. Okay. So try to attend the live lectures and um, go through the pre-learning modules, that is the recorded videos and so on. Okay. And I will give the assignments and you guys need to finish your assignments on time and you need to submit your assignments okay. so there there are no excuses so there won't be any excuses so you need to uh, do your assignments and you need to submit it on time and also you need to do your mock test as well as the grand test as many times as possible okay. but don't rush to do the mocks before learning the concepts don't rush to do the mocks before finishing your assignments. Okay. So at first, I recommend everyone to learn the concept, watch the videos, attend the live lectures, okay. finish your assignment first, and then go to do the mocks. Okay. So because here, the target for you is when you do your mocks, in your first attempt of doing the mock itself, you must score up to 80 or 90% in each mock. Okay. So that's the target. It means that you must get familiarized with the concepts. You must get familiarized with all the points, all the keywords. Okay. So everything that you need to uh, get familiarized uh, about yourself. Okay. And then before you do the mocks or the grand test, so quickly you need to refer the handouts. Okay. So go quickly through the handouts and go quickly through all the notes that you have prepared, guys. Okay. and then try to attempt the mocks or the grand test. Okay. Anyhow, the grand test will be at the final, uh, like 15 or 20 days before your examination, we will release the grand test. So you need not to worry about the grand test at this stage, okay. but you will be doing your mocks uh, like eventually as uh, you finish each topic. Okay. Let's say for instance, when you finish the cardiovascular system, then we will release the mock which is related to the cardiovascular system. Okay. So in such way, uh, we'll keep on releasing each mocks. So when once you finish your systems, okay, and always I 
recommend all you guys to participate in a team push activities. So it is a new thing that I'm going to implement uh, from November batch. So this activity is nothing but here, what I'm going to do is I will split you in batches, in groups, like group A, B, C, and D, depending on uh, the number of the candidates. Okay. So in each group, there will be around uh, 15 to 20 uh, students. And what we are going to do is, for all the assignments, and apart from the assignments, there is another activity that I'm going to implement is like when, when once I finish the topic, let's say, for example, if it is the respiratory system. So when once I finish the respiratory system, then individual students, all the individual candidates, what you need to do is you need to go through all the respiratory system. You need to watch the recorded videos as already you will attend the live lectures. Okay. So you will attend the live lecture. If you want, you can watch the recorded videos. And also you can go through quickly, go through the handouts. Okay? And when once you finish everything, then what you need to do is you need to, uh, in, in a Word document, I will give you the template as well. So in the Word document, you need to type all the keywords which are related to the respiratory system. Let's say, for instance, the first topic is about the asthma. So in asthma topic, what are the important points or important keywords which are related to that topic? Okay. So quickly, you need to keep on typing all the important keywords. So in each topic, like in each system, um, for instance, if I finish the respiratory system, at the end, you guys need to collect all the important keywords from the respiratory system. Okay, So important keywords in the sense, what is the onset of action for pharmacotyrol? Okay, So what is the cystic fibrosis? Okay, So what, which cough syrup is contraindicated in uh, hypertension? So such important keywords that you need to uh, gather and you need to uh, type it in a Word document. Okay. So when once you finish typing all those important keywords, okay, so what you need to do is, and at the same time, I will also release the assignments. You also need to answer the assignments. Okay. So when you finish the assignments and when you finish uh, the keywords, okay, so your group members, the other group members or the team members, okay, so they will keep on asking you, uh, if you have done your assignment and or if you have uh, done entering all your keywords okay so they will keep on pushing you because here what happens is if there are 15 members in the group okay and 14 candidates have done all the assignments and uh, they have done all the important things like the keywords and so on okay? and the 15th candidate the last candidate hasn't done this task okay so now what happens is the whole team, they can't submit their result or they can't submit their report. Okay. So in order to submit the report, all the 15 members should do the activity. Okay. Did you get the point, guys? So in order to submit your team report, okay, like team A report, report. All, the, like team a report. all the 15 all the candidates must do their activities, must finish the activities on time. Okay. So when once you finish the activities, Okay. Then uh, one of the team members will compile all the uh, reports and then you will upload it in the drive. Okay. But here, what you need to do is, let's say if, uh, for example, if Ravi, okay, Ravi is uh, doing the assignment and entering the keywords. Okay. So what Ravi need to do is, when once Ravi finish entering all the keywords from respiratory system, so Ravi need to cross check with his peers. Okay. At least with uh, three members, three other uh, group members, Ravi need to cross-check his work. Okay, or Ravi need to submit his work to other uh, three members and ask them to cross-check his work. So let's say, for example, when Ravi has uh, collected all the keywords, Ravi has got only uh, forty keywords related to the respiratory system. Okay. But the other uh, candidate. For example, Pritham. So Pritham has got around uh, 50 uh, keywords, important keywords, or the points related to the respiratory system. And then the third candidate, uh, Harita, she has got around 70. And the fourth candidate, uh, some Swati or someone, has got around 90 or 100. Okay. So now what happens is everyone, each uh, candidate, they will compare with the team members' activity. 
okay so how many uh, points that uh, how many keywords that uh, you have got and how many keywords that i have got okay so and then quickly you guys need to quickly you need to screen and you need to see what are the important points that you have missed okay so when once everyone is done like all the 15 candidates are done then only you can compile the uh, report and you can upload it in the drive okay. so here what happens is if one of the candidate that is the 15th candidate hasn't done any of the activities then what happens is all the whole group will they can't submit their report okay. then all the whole group members they will keep on messaging that candidate okay so to do the assignments and to do the work okay and try to uh, wind it up as soon as possible it means that there will be some sort of push up from the other team members as well okay so this is to avoid a little bit of the laziness among uh, each student okay sometimes we might think that okay these are the activities that even i can do it next week okay so i can skip for this week and i can do it for the next uh, coming saturday and sunday okay so for such students always they need to be some sort of the push up okay so because procrastination is the thief of time so to avoid such uh, things always there will be some sort of the push up from the other uh, group members or other team members okay so to make sure that you guys need to submit all the uh, modules that i give it to you on time okay so the things why i am uh, enforcing all this for the november batch is the experience that what the july batch candidates they have got okay so in july batch as i explained that they have faced a lot of like some students not all the students they some some were uh, lucky okay so they got same uh, like repeated questions what they have uh, learn from um, the concepts and what they have learned from our mocks. Okay? So they got uh, most of like 80% of the questions from uh, our concepts and from the mocks. But some other, they have got only 70% or 60% from the concepts and from the mocks. It means that if they answer all the 60% correct, okay, 60% uh, in the sense the scoring is only 50%, it means that they must answer at least 50% correct from the 60 percent what they have learned okay so let's say for instance if they lose at least by one percent like by 49 48 49 then they will fail that whole paper okay so as everyone will uh, like it, it is a little bit of uh thing that the apc that have done they have revised the uh paper okay so they have revised the uh questions recently for the July batch. So that's why now for this batch, I'm planning to make sure that you guys will have much practice. Okay. So we guys need to learn a lot of information. Okay. So because I'm going to add the new things, new contents as well in all my slides as well as in all my handouts. Okay. So we are going to add certain new things as well. So you guys need more time to work out on those things. Okay. So it means that you should not be lazy. Whenever we give some mocks or assignments or any other uh, modules or the works. So on time, you guys need to keep on finishing it. Okay. So if you practice in such a way, then uh, definitely what will be the way that the examiners, they try to twist in your final exam. So definitely you will pass the exam. Okay. And here are a few other things that I want like to share with you guys. So this is the um, one for the assignments. Always uh, like from the July batch, I have started giving some assignments to them. Okay. But from now, from November, I will prepare assignments for each topic. What will be the topic that I uh, teach you? So in each topic, there will be assignments. And for assignments, like don't think that you need to keep on writing a big essay and uh, it takes a long time. So for assignments, for each question, what will be the question it is, just you need to give the answer in one word. Okay. So hardly in one or two words, you need to give the answer. Okay. So it means that if you are familiarized with the topic, if you are uh, familiarized with each uh, topic, each system, then hardly it should take only one hour time for you to finish this assignment. 
Okay, so you need to uh, just give the answers in one or two words. And again, when once you finish this assignment, and uh, what you need to do is you need to ask your um, group members to check your work, and you will be checking their work. Okay, and when once everyone is done, then you guys need to compile and submit to me. Okay, so that is in the drive. You will put it in the drive, and then I will go through all the questions. Okay, and even for the assignments, what we'll do is when once you guys have done the assignment and during our live lectures, so I will discuss the answers for each question. Okay, and at the same time for the mocks, so we have started a new system known as the ProProx Quiz Maker, so where you guys can. Uh, log in and you guys can do your mocks as well as the grant test so it is completely uh, timer based okay and all the mocks and especially the grant test it is simulated to that of the final caps examination that how you face in the pearson okay and yeah that's it guys and also there are a few other things uh, that i would like to share um whenever you guys do your mocks so there is a template that i i will present it to you so this is a word document template and i will share this word document template with you guys in the drive So can you see this word document here? Okay. So like here, I just uh, gave only 10 mocks, but uh, right now we got total 15 mocks at Elite Expertise. And also uh, we are going to add new mocks based on the July examination. So overall there will be around 20 mocks. And right now we got only uh, one grant test, but for November batch, I'm going to implement, like I'm going to add more grant tests as well. Okay. So I will also uh, add one more grant test. And at the same time, especially I will prepare a separate mock only uh, for case studies. Okay. And wherever it is applicable, I will keep on adding more case studies for you guys. Because from case studies, if you learn from the case studies, then you will get an everlasting uh, impression. Then you will never forget uh, about it. Okay? And you will learn in a better way if you uh, go through the case studies. Instead of giving a straightforward MCQ, if you if uh, I prepared the case study, then it becomes much easy for you in your final examination. Okay, So here, for the mocks, you need to use this template, guys. So for the first mock, mock one, when you attempt your mock one for the first attempt, you need to enter the score, the percentage that how much score that you have got in your first attempt. Okay, And the same goes with the second attempt. When you do the mock, when you repeat the mock uh, during your second attempt, Okay, so how much score that you will get. Okay, But always I recommend that if you have done one of the mock, like mock one today, Okay, which is on 21st of July, then give at least 10 days gap to repeat the same mock. Okay, And when you are repeating the same mock, don't refer it again okay, without any uh, reference, like without referring the content, just try to attempt and see how much that you will get in the second attempt. Okay, So in a subsequent way, you need to keep on doing all the mocks okay, and at least try to finish each mock 10 times. Okay, And also there are lot of things that you need to learn from the mock and i will explain you everything uh, during um, my lecture sessions okay so you should not just keep on giving the answers you must learn a lot from each question in the mock okay so that everything that i will explain you during my uh, lecture sessions okay so this is about the mocks guys and then there is another uh, word document that i would like to share with you
Okay, guys. So this is another one which shows the daily time allocated hours, like how much time that you are spending each day for your CAPS preparation. Okay. So here, honestly, you guys need to enter the hours. Okay. So let's say if you are starting from Friday, so on Friday, on week one, okay. So how many hours that you have spent for preparation? Okay. Then on Saturday, how many hours that you have spent? Okay. Like on each day, you need to keep on entering the hours. And at the end, you need to enter the total hours. And at the finally, at the end of the month, you need to enter the cumulative total hours that you have spent in preparation in preparing for the uh, CAPS examination. Okay. So everyone must follow uh, this study hours as well. Okay, so try to spend as much time as possible every day. Okay? So at least three hours daily. So let's say, for instance, on Monday, if it is not possible for you to uh, study on Monday, okay? then try to spend an extra one hour on Tuesday or on Wednesday. Okay, and make sure that you guys need to spend at least sixteen to twenty hours each week for preparing the CAPS examination. Okay, and this sixteen to twenty hours each week is only for the initially okay initial for the like for the month of uh, now for july august okay uh, and september okay but when you reach to october month okay, then your weekly hours should get increased okay so your weekly hours should get increased and that should reflect on your document okay so it means that if you guys can spend as much as possible then your journey becomes much easier Okay. So your CAPS exam journey becomes much easier and you guys can easily clear the examination in your first attempt. Okay. So these are the few things that I would like to share with you guys. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. And Thank you, sir. Good night. I will see you in my next lecture, okay, which would be the first lecture. Okay. Until then, uh, good night and have a nice weekend. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.